I'd like to introduce you to the various electrical systems on this boat. There is an AC system and a DC system. Both of them are controlled by panels here. And we will go through them each individually and show you some of the things you need to know to get hooked up to shore power, to run the generators, to run the boat with the motor going and no generator entirely off DC. So let's start. All of the electrical systems are accessed through these panels. First the AC, the alternating current, that's shore power. This panel and this panel facing forward on the boat are the AC controls. First and foremost are the AC master switches. They are here and here. They must be turned off in order to connect or disconnect so that you don't make arcs when you disconnect the power or connect the power. And of course they must be on for any of this to work. They are currently on because we are hooked into shore power. On each bank you have a variety of um, controls. Forward aft air conditioner, saloon forward air conditioner, aft cabin air conditioner, and saloon aft air conditioner. There are four separate air conditioning units on the boat. None of them should be run without this central pump switch being on, and it's marked that way. Air conditioning pump must be on. This runs the water pump that, that allows the um, heat exchange with the air conditioners, so none of these switches should be on unless the pump is also on. In the Great Northwest, you probably won't be needing much air conditioning, but that is something you need to know. Going further down, we have port outlets. That controls electrical outlets for regular AC power on the port side of the boat. And likewise, on the starboard set, we have starboard outlets. Just below that, we have dryer and washer, which are not functional. Below that, we have an engine room outlet, which will generally be on when you're on AC power. Below that, on the starboard side, is the water heater. The water heat does heat from the engine when you're running the boat, but when you've been at shore for a while and hooked up to AC and not running the motor, this is the way the water is heated. There are two chargers on the boat, charger one, charger two. These charge the main battery banks and they should be on while you're on AC power. There is an ice maker, which is also at this point not functional and needs to be left off. There is one for cooker, which is the stove behind me on the port side. There is a fridge freezer and that needs to be run whenever you can on AC power. That has its own pump and it does not require an additional switch. And there is also one for a f AC powered freshwater pump, which is certainly more powerful and works better. Uh, so while you're on AC, I generally recommend you use that pump and not the DC powered pump, which we'll show you in a bit. There is a switch for engine room lights, which lights up the um, fluorescent lighting down below and is certainly a much better lighting system than little DC lights. And there is a aft GFT, which refers to the aft head, and there is a, a safety uh, GFT switch in that head, and that this switch activates that. Let me discuss with you um, starting of generators. Uh, when you are not on AC power uh, from the shore, you still can generate AC power. There are actually two generators on this boat. There is a small one, which is controlled from the upper panel. It is labeled generator two. It's a three kilowatt generator and is capable of running the coffee maker and other small devices. It is not capable of running multiple devices simultaneously. It's certainly the right thing to use when you are on the hook and just want to make coffee in the morning or um, run the microwave, but don't try and do both things at once. It is started from here there is a switch on the right side, marked start and stop. The procedure is very simple. You rocker the switch at the top to make it start and hold it until you hear the engine start. And likewise, when you want to stop it, you hit the same switch at the bottom and it will stop. You have to hold the switch as long as it takes to stop the engine. That just starts it. It doesn't connect it up to the rest of the um, boat. There are a number of switches you have to use to actually access that power. 
Those are on this lower AC panel. There is a switch in the upper right, which says generator one, generator two, and off. It's currently in the off position. In order to use that generator, you would have to switch it to generator two. There is an AC power selector down in the lower left. That is the choices of shore, off, or generator. And obviously, to be on generator, it has to be switched to generator. And finally, from the AC power standpoint, you must choose forward or aft for where you plug in. I'll discuss that in a minute. For the use of the generator, it needs to be in the off position. Once all those switches are in proper position and this generator is running, you'll have about three kilowatts of electricity to run small appliances, etc. Certainly AC lights and all that kind of thing are readily run from that generator. If you have larger scale power needs, such as running an air conditioner while on the hook, you need to use the large generator. This is a 20 kilowatt generator. It is marked number one. Its starting procedure is a little different. So again, to review, in order to have it functioning on generator one, you would start with master switches off, start generator one by pressing first the preheat and then the start simultaneously. Hold until the engine starts. Place the selector switch for the generator on generator one. Place the AC power selector on generator and the shore power selector should be off. You should have AC power at that point and you can run basically everything on the boat from that 20 kilowatt, but it does use more fuel. One more thing to discuss is um, AC power from shore power. This is done by a 50 amp yellow cable stored in the aft lazarette. There is actually a spare there as well in case you're too far from a power source, but it is a 50 foot cable and generally reaches in most situations. Again, master switches need to be off. AC power selector needs to be on shore. You need to figure out whether you're going to plug in in the forward or the aft um, receptacle and then place this switch in either forward or aft. The generators are off. You plug in to the shore with that breaker off. Pass the cable over the side without letting it dip into the water. Plug it into fore or aft as you need to by configuration of your docking. Then come aboard, turn on the master switches, select fore or aft as you've already done, and the power selector must be on shore. Remember also to turn on the breaker at the dock uh, or else you still won't have power. At that point, you can run all the systems of the ship simultaneously.